So according to the doctors, it's definitely possible that I might have a bit of a screw loose somewhere. And it looks like they are right. That screw is definitely loose. And this is the screw that I'm talking about. It's the lead screw from the lathe's top slide. Now to put a long story short, as much as I like the lathe, the top slide is one of the weaker parts of it. The main things are, is that there isn't a whole lot of travel, which makes cutting large tapers quite difficult. The gibs are also way too small, and I don't like the locking lug for the 4-way tool post. So I'm currently redesigning it, and a few other parts that make up the carriage. And in order to do that, I will need a way to cut some trapezoidal threads, which is what the lead screws use. Trapezoidal threads, unlike a regular V-thread, which you'd find on a normal screw, use a 30 degree included angle, as opposed to the normal 60 or 55 degree, which is what I normally cut. And the biggest difference is that it's just more efficient at transferring power than a normal screw. The lead screw in the old mini lathe used V-threads when it really should have used trapezoidal, and moving the top and cross slides were noticeably harder than it really should have been. And I'm sure a lot of that came down to the friction that you'd get from that type of screw, which I'd really want to avoid here. Now I haven't fully settled on the new design, but I will need to make up some board holes with some trapezoidal threads. Now it might be possible to single point them, but in the small amount of experience I've had with internal single point cutting, doing them in trapezoidal threads was quite difficult, especially when they were a smaller diameter. And it's mostly down to the fact that it's a relatively big cut compared to a normal V-thread, and the boring bar would have to be quite narrow and possibly quite long, depending on the exact thread that I'm going for. I can definitely imagine that chattering like crazy. So instead I'm going to take the other route, and that's just going to be to make a tap. Well technically, I'm going to need two. One for the top slide, and one for the cross slide. They're going to be very similar, except the cross slide uses a reverse, or a left-handed thread, and the top slide does not. It uses a normal, you know, right-hand thread. So essentially for the cross slide, it's going to be righty-loosey, lefty-tidy. Now obviously, I'd normally rely on carbide for doing this, but I don't have any trapezoidal cutting inserts, so instead, I'm going to use some high-speed steel. I thought I'd be right to use this one, but I forgot this one is actually made for cutting gear hobs. The angle that it cuts is a bit off. The other one should be good though. It's 30 degrees, but the tip of the end is a bit wide for the size of thread that I'm cutting. So I'll mark it out and then take it over to the sander and take it down a bit. And that matches the threads pretty much perfectly. And to make the tap, I don't have any drill rod on hand, but I do have some 1080 steel, which should do. It's almost the same stuff as I'd normally use, but there's a bit less carbon, but we can still harden it, and it should be good for a few uses. Okay, so at this point, I should walk you through the design of the tap and explain exactly why I'm making something which should be a very small tap so long. In fact, this one here should be about 18 centimeters at least. So essentially, what I'm going to be making is a tandem tap, which I'm not hugely familiar with, but as it turns out, quite a few Acme or trapezoidal taps are designed this way. Essentially, because we're removing so much material compared to a normal tap, we can either make the tap very long and have a very shallow taper, or we can combine a roughing stage with a finishing pass in one tap. Which is essentially what I want to try here. I've never used one of these before since I don't usually cut these types of threads and they're horrendously expensive to buy, but I did want to give it a shot and see if it's any good. Which is pretty much why I'm filming it, because if I'd done a normal tap, I probably wouldn't have filmed it, but since I'm doing something a bit new, I thought you guys might want to see, you know, what it turns out like. And the reason why I'm doing a long shank is it means I can tap very deep holes, which the design will probably need. And that's going to be the first thing that I'll need to tackle, because if I can, I would like to make this all in one setup. Doing it this way means everything is guaranteed to be perfectly concentric, 
We should be fine, except even with the live center, I am expecting there to be quite a bit of flex in this setup. So the first thing I'll do is I'll swap out the normal cutting inserts that I use for some ground, extremely sharp carbide inserts. This should cut down on the cutting force and it should reduce any chatter. Alright, and that turned out a lot better than I was expecting. The surface finish is okay, but I should be able to improve it with some 400 grit. And we're just over 12 millimeters, so I can sand it down to its final size. With the blank now roughed in, I now machine in a gutter for the cutter to start. So I can now swap over to the high speed steel cutter which we ground earlier. I'm going to be cutting the lathe's cross slide tap so I need to remember to reverse the lead screw. Alright, so far it looks pretty much like it should. Although the flat top nature of the cutter does mean that it is pushing up a pretty noticeable burr. However, as the cut got deeper, you could really start to see the back end of the tap really starting to push out, which I guess isn't a huge surprise. Now at this point, I think a follower rest probably would have helped, but I wasn't too sure how it would have held up when pushing into these smaller threads. So instead I just pushed on and fingers crossed that I could get it to work. And thankfully it did work out in the end. It took about 30 different passes to get all the flex out, but every single pass I could see chips building up, which was a good sign. And apart from the burrs, which I can clean off, I think that is a fine looking thread. Now the next thing I need to do is make the roughing threads. So what I'll do is I'll make a second garter near the middle to sort of separate each section. Now when I was designing it, I felt that it was important that I did all the threads at once. This is because I want the finish pass to follow the same helix as the roughing pass. Doing it this way means I should be able to get perfectly formed threads. So in order to make the roughing profile, which is essentially just sort of slimming down the threads, I'll simply shift the cutting tool to the left and the right using the top slide. Well, that's the idea anyway. Fingers crossed that it works. Alright, and that took a bit longer than I thought it would, but that looks to be pretty close to what I was aiming for. The last thing to do is to turn down a 4 degree taper onto the threads, and this should further reduce the cutting load, and it should help the tap cut straight. Alright, that's looking pretty good. So before I part it off, I'll get it in the milling machine and get the flutes cut. I've now got it set up in the dividing head, and from here, there are a few approaches that I can take to cutting the flutes. 
I can simply go down the center with a radius end mill, or I can go down the side with a radius end mill, or I can simply go down the side with a straight cutter. Those are pretty much the main ways to do it on a basic setup like this. Now I've always erred more towards using the ball end mill to take a cut off the side, and that's pretty much because it's recommended that way in the machinery's handbook. And doing it this way gives you a small undercut in the tooth, and that produces a really sharp cutting edge. But what I've found is if you do it this way, you do tend to lose a fair amount of material from the core of the tap, which essentially means you end up with a weaker tap. Now I could use a smaller radius cutter, but this is the smallest one that I currently have. Now the one time that I've actually machined down the center, I found that the cutting edge that it produced was pretty rubbish. The final option is the flat tooth edge, and in the few times that I've done it, I found that the cutting edge is a little bit worse than the sort of hooked edge, and that it probably won't be as sharp. But it's the exact same way that I made the gear hob, and that works just fine. Alright, and the first cut looks pretty good. So I guess one down, three to go. Now I am choosing to make the flutes a little bit smaller than I normally would. This is mainly just to keep as much material in the core of the tap and make it as strong as possible. It shouldn't affect the cutting edge, but it will mean that the flutes will fill up a bit faster than they normally would. Alright, the flutes are looking pretty good, so I'll now get the square drive cut. Alright, that turned out looking pretty great. So the last thing I need to do now, before I part it off, is to clean up the teeth. What I've found is when you cut the teeth when the tap is soft, as opposed to grinding them in when it's been hardened, means that it will kick up a bit of a burr, which needs to be cleaned up. And doing that's pretty simple, it's just a little bit of filing. And at the same time, I'm also going to file in the back clearance behind the teeth. I'm not exactly sure why, but I've always done it after I've hardened it on the bench grinder, but doing it this way with a file is just a lot easier, and I think the results are a lot better. Alright, and that's the tap now done. Certainly one of the more stranger looking pieces that I've made, but the important thing is that it does work. So what I'll do is I'll quickly harden and then temper it and then go from there. And I'm only going to harden the cutting part of the tap. No reason to harden the shank. Okay, so in the final design, I should be tapping a piece of bronze, but I don't have a piece of bronze on me at the moment, so instead I'm going to tap this piece of aluminium. Now I don't really have a reference for what a non-tandem tap would be like when I'm cutting this type of thread, but the cutting forces so far are pretty low. Although the flutes do fill up quite quickly. Either way, the trapezoidal part is cutting with next to no force, and I can safely say that the roughing stage has made a big difference.
and I'm pretty happy with the thread that it produced. Now I haven't cut the matching thread yet, but when I do, I will cut it to match. And I should be able to do that once I finalise the design. Till then, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, see you next week.